We're going to continue from our previous drawing here to create the rest of our box. For our first part, this bottom, we need to create a few more fingers or box joints on these two sides. I'm going to do that in the sketch just to keep the sketching and constraints portion of this exercise going. So right click your sketch, pull it down in the document uh, browser, and then edit sketch. Now we're back to where we were, where we added all of these tabs, and I'm going to fit something within this side and then mirror it over to this side. So I'm going to pull my drawing down a bit. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to have three tabs on this side. So I want something like this. And I made sure they all lock together. I'm also going to add a piece over here and a piece over here since my geometry has to line up with this point and that point. In the middle of your design, we know that this is 150, but we can use the inspect tool and get a measurement from this point to this point. And we know that that's 140. So I'll close out the measure tool and I'll keep that in mind when I go to create my design. I'm going to do a similar design from the previous uh, pattern. When I select my depths, I'm gonna use the same value here. So I'll hit D on the keyboard and I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna make sure I select that same D5 or type in five millimeter, press enter. I'll do the same thing here, click here and press D5. So now when I go to put my part in here, I know that it's five millimeters. I'll space out my parts again, but real quick, I'm gonna use this value for here. This will just make all of my parts the same when I go to adjust. I'll create a distance from this point to this point that's 140 from our measurement prior. And I want to center this and keep this distance off. So I need some distance from this part and I'll tell it what that is. And I'm going to create a distance of 20 because I think that'll space off of the part fine. And I can remember those numbers. Same thing goes for this. I'll click this value and press enter. The last thing I'll do is center this part by making those equal. Everything looks good from here. And all I have to do is coincident one of these points to one of these points, and that should lock in. Turn black, and it looks like my part is constrained. There's my three tabs right there. I'll use my line tool again, L, create a construction or press X, and then just find your midpoint here. We actually don't care how long this is, so I'm just gonna create a line so we have one. I'll use this construction line to mirror this part over. In order to do that, let's select our mirror at the top, select our objects. I'm only gonna mirror our tabs over. So you should have nine objects. Our mirror line is this line we just made, and I'll hit OK. So now we only have a few things to change, but this makes it a really simple design. So let's finish the sketch, and then we'll go back to that feature. So drop down to this timeline, right click, and edit your feature. Where it says profile, hit the X, and let's just hit that middle profile, and we'll hit OK. That now is our final updated bottom of our part. We'll create the two sides, and then the other two sides together. Make sure you save your work at this point. That's the most complicated piece so far. We can go back to the top view just to see our part. Again, we're only worried about the 2D shape in this part. For each of the sides, I'm gonna make a different component. So I'm gonna right click the top level and hit new component. I'll make this short side and I'll start working on this piece here. To get started, 
I'm actually just going to create a projected view. So I'm gonna copy these lines, but they're gonna reference this design. So if this design ever changes, I'm able to adapt. Let's create a new sketch. I'm gonna do this on the oops, X and Y. And I'm gonna use this right plane here. So go to create, project, or hit P on the keyboard and select your project from before. You can hit okay. And now this enables me to use the parts in my drawing as before. So I can use my line tool now and extend off of these parts. I know that my part's not gonna go past here, so I can actually click through that geometry. Again, don't care about my distance. I'm gonna bring that down. And then if you hover over this part and drag it over, you'll automate those constraints and I'll click. Now, when I go to flip this part up, it should be complete. When I go to insert this next part, I need to be careful about how I do that. This is going to come in and cover part of our geometry. So we need to be careful how we make that last part. I need a distance, so hit D on the keyboard. We'll select this piece here. And for our total height, we need to make sure we add that five millimeters. So if we wanted our part to be 60 millimeters tall, we would actually want to select the distance from this point to this point and make sure that it's linear. So let's make that 50 millimeters. And you can see that this has turned black and is constrained. If I finish my sketch, I can click this face now, hit E for extrude, and I know my part's five millimeters, I'll hit okay. And I've just created my next part. I'll know that when I turn this, it should lock up really nicely into that part. This part is gonna be the same as this part over here, so I'm not gonna draw it twice. It's not worth it. I only need to draw one more part up top, and I'll do that now. This is gonna get tricky because I'm gonna to need to add some sort of tab in this side that matches with this part. But I'm gonna draw this part, and then I'll come back and cut open the tabs for that part. Go to the top, make a new component, and we'll name that long side or L side. I'll create a new sketch. Again, I'm gonna choose that XY plane and I'm gonna draw it up here just cause it'll help me figure out my geometry. P on the keyboard will let me take this geometry and I'll hit okay. I'll use my L tool again and I don't want to select this portion because that's part of this piece. So I know that I'm going to go through to this side of the part. So I'm actually going to start my part here. So let's make a short line that goes five millimeters. See how it snapped? It knew that how far I wanted to go. Don't care about my distance. I'm going to come back. And in order to find that part, you can line it up and make sure everything's perpendicular. And now I've just drawn most of my part. I'm gonna cut this part off here. And if you need to, you can use the trim tool to cut that away. So now the majority of my part is right there. When I fold this bottom part or this short side into this part, they're gonna overlap, so they need to fall into each other. In order to do that, we can create a few tabs on each side so that they're inverse of each other. To get started, let's make a line again. And we'll just draw our same style of geometry. And I'll hit enter. To get a random line, you can click and delete. I'm gonna use D on the keyboard this distance from this point to this point should also be this number. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I do know I made it 50. So I can make it adaptable if I need to. I still don't have my geometry perfect, 
but I know that that's 150 for sure. This design is not perfectly constrained. So if we move it, we can see that this line here tends to move with the part. So just make sure that these are equal. And if this is 150, it's going to meet your part. So you can use equal. And that'll fully constrain your part. Now we're going to take this geometry and place it within here. Do the same thing, make this 10. We'll make this 10. We know that this is 5. We know that this is 5. This distance is going to be 50 because that's what we added in here. So let's call that 50. The last step is to figure out how far apart we want these. This needs to at least be five above. So let's do that and see how it looks. So let's make this five. I'll press enter. I'll make this top equal to this part. And that should force this to be a certain constraint. That way I know that this is five and five. Let's coincide in our part and see what happens. All right, let's look at the part and extrude it and then we'll mirror stuff over. So let's finish our sketch. We'll click our uh, drawing. We'll hit E on the keyboard. We'll make it five millimeters and we'll extrude it. Now I'm going to run into a snag with this part and this part coming forward. So we're going to need to alleviate a little bit of that. When this part fully aligns, we're going to have a big gap. So there's a couple ways to address that. We could cut away this little corner here and then create a tab here. Or we can try to cut away more here. We've got a lot of options. So we need to be consistent with the way that we make our geometries. So the way I tackle this might not be the best or what you think you want your project to look like. but I'll make sure that it works. When I fold this box up and this box in, I'm going to have one piece cut out here. So I'm going to go back to the sketch and I'm going to draw this portion here. So let's go to our short side. I'll go to my sketches, right click and edit that sketch. It brought me into this active component and I'm back in the timeline. Let's use our line tool and let's kind of rough draw what we want. We know that's going to have a spot for that five millimeter wedge. And then we've got those small tabs, a longer cutaway. And the tabs finalized. We can hit finish sketch. And just double check. We know that we need a larger slot and too small. So let's go back to that sketch. That looks like it'll work. Let's find the geometries we know. We know this is going to be 5 because of the material. We know that this is going to be 5 as well because of the material. We know that this distance is 5. We know that this is going to be 5. and we set this one as well to five. Again, if we finish our sketch, click on that sketch, we're starting to get the shape that we're looking for. All right, this takes a little practice to get used to, but we know that this should be 10, this should be 10, and then this should be the remainder, and that should cover most of our thing. So right click, edit sketch, Let's dimension this part to be 10. Let's dimension this part to be 10. And let's make sure that our total distance here from this point 
to this point matches. And then we can coincident this point to the sketch here and that should lock in place. Let's finish our sketch and let's just highlight that quick glass sketch here and edit that extrusion. Uncheck my selections and hit OK. Now it looks like my parts might fit, which is what I want. This little tab is the hardest part. Once everything looks like it's going to line up well, we can start copying our, our shapes here and then we'll copy our parts over. Let's save just to be safe. I'll go back to this initial sketch, edit my sketch, and I'll create a line, make sure it's construction, find my midpoint, drag it over, use my mirror tool, zoom in on the lines I'd like, Once I've selected them all, select my mirror line and hit OK. That part is now done. I'll finish my sketch, edit my feature, deselect profile, select my profile and hit OK. I need to copy this part one more time. So I'm going to go to my long slide, activate my component, go to my sketches, edit my sketch, use a line, find my midpoint with the triangle, click the line, make sure it's construction, mirror tool, select the things you'd like to mirror, select your mirror line, and hit OK. Finish your sketch, right click your feature, edit feature, deselect profile, click your profile, hit OK. Now all of our parts are complete for this open box, but all we have to do now is take this part and bring it over here. In order to do this, we can copy parts and reflect them over a line or an axis or something like that. So there's a couple ways we'll do this. Let's make it as simple as possible. Now that we have all of our components in our tree, we know that we want another long side. Drop down, find your bodies, right click this body, move copy, create a copy, and now we can move our part and rotate it in position. So here's our rotated moved part. We can slide it wherever we'd like. And we're also going to rotate this around the Z axis. And now again, we can move our part. And we know we want this corner lined up here. So you can do a point to point move. So I know this point here should hopefully sit at that point and now they're locked in place. So there's a couple ways to move stuff around. It's good to play with this. Hit OK. Now you've got two bodies on the long side. Let's do this one more time. Let's activate the short side, drop down, find your bodies, right click body one, move copy. And let's rotate around the Z axis. You can pull your piece or just do a flip 180. Make sure you select create copy, free move or point to point. And I know I want this point to this point in here. And it looks good. I'll hit OK. I've got two bodies. I'll clean up my tree. And my box is now complete. If I go to my top level, I can activate all my components and you can see all of the three dimensional parts for my box. 
From here, we have one more step to bring into the laser cutter. We're going to right click our 3D box and we're going to create a new component. This is going to be our exported DXF and we're going to put export DXF and we're going to create a new sketch. So create sketch. Again, I like to put this on the XY axis for now. And the sketch that we're going to create is going to be a projected sketch. So create project or P on the keyboard. Now select all of your components and hit OK. Finish that sketch. The reason that we did a projected is so that when we change all of our geometries, this exported single sketch will change with every single part. So when I turn off all of my bodies, I'm just left with this sketch. I can drop this menu down, drop this menu down, right click that last sketch and save as DXF. That saved DXF will be our laser cut file. Don't forget to save your project. This should be complete at this point.